Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on the Real Estate Podcast. I'm Todd Sumney. And I'm Rich LaRue. And we've got a great guest for you today. We do. I'm going to start with a story. One day, a couple, about a year and a half ago, I get a phone call, actually, two years ago, I get a phone call from our franchise broker owner in Naperville, Illinois, suburb of Chicago. It says, Hey, Todd, there's this agent in my office that is just helping so many home buyers and sellers and she's just doing an amazing job she hasn't been in the business that long at the time and i can't believe how quickly um, she has just grown a business and is just helping home buyers and sellers and so uh two weeks later i think i was out in chicago i got to meet our guest today in person and as expected she was full of energy full of ideas knowledge information just a, a firecracker top-notch real estate agent helping home buyers and sellers and i couldn't believe how many people she was helping right out of the gate so today we have with us amber holup um and you got married you have yes. an, can you tell us your full name well, my my uh, real estate name is still Amber Hoff. I've not changed my name legally. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to go through all of the licensing and all that process to change it. So, but okay. uh, my my married name, if I were to change, choose to change it, would be Amber Hoff Nowinski. So, gotcha. Because yes. I see it on <laughs> social media, right? Yes. Is it like yep. I want people to mm -hmm. if they want to find me either way, they can see my hyphenated last name, whether my maiden name or my uh, married name. So. Awesome. Well, why don't we start there? Tell people how they can find you on social media. Yeah, uh, well, we're on Facebook. Uh, you can find me at Amber Health Nowinski. Um, I'm on Instagram under the Health Nowinski group um, and on YouTube as well um, under Living in Chicagoland. Love it. And uh, today it's a little bit colder there in Chicagoland when we're recording. That's why we put the fireplace in the back yeah. for you. <laughs> But um, let's go way back, um, back to the beginning. Um, how did you start in real estate and what was the drive behind it? Yeah, so I got started at uh, 21 years old when I became a real estate investor. Um, I was not licensed at the time, and my agent was actually uh, transitioning over from another brokerage to Home Smart Realty um, at the time. And he was like, "Hey, Amber, like I know you just bought an investment property, but..." I saw you communicating really well with your attorney, um, with me, with your lender. You know, have you ever thought about becoming a real estate agent? And at the time I was like, no, I just graduated from college. I just got a new full-time job. Um, you know, I think God has different plans for me. Um, but that summer he needed a transaction coordinator and I was working from home during COVID and I had a little bit more flexibility with my full-time job. So I became his TC. Um, and that was a really great opportunity for me to get my feet wet and just learn the, the system from a buyer going under contract to closing. And so I managed probably 30 files for him uh, before I got my real estate license that fall when I was 22 years old. Wow, what a great opportunity to get started, to Absolutely. really get in and, and deal with the transactions and right. all that it takes. Yes, absolutely. If anyone's thinking about becoming a realtor, I, if you have the opportunity to be a transaction coordinator, it's a, at first, just to see if it's a good fit for you, I highly recommend it. It helped me a lot. So obviously that had to give you like a real firsthand knowledge of contracts, the forms, the transaction process as what do you think you learned the most out of being a TC that helped you transaction coordinator that helped you then when you finally did um, get into the realtor side of it? Yeah, I think um, just realizing that there's going to be fires to kill and that just because uh, maybe an offer was accepted doesn't mean that that's going to close. Um, <laughs> so don't get don't get too excited about your commission check until uh, closing day and it's in your hand. Uh, there are lots of things uh, and don't don't count your what, how do they say that don't count your chickens before they're hatched something like that. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That's Great awesome. advice. That is. 
So, uh, so eventually you decided to, to get your actual license um, in Illinois. Do they call you brokers? Is that what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so um, uh, can you tell us about that, about how you actually uh, studied for your license, your first, maybe your first transaction? Who is the first customer you helped? Yeah. So kind of scary. Uh, so my dad has a big mouth. <laughs> he loves bragging about his kids. So when I was studying to get my real estate license, uh, my dad was telling everybody like, oh, my daughter's going to be a realtor, you know, and I had three people ready to go, ready to, actually four, sorry, four people ready to either list or buy before I even sat down for my exam. Uh, wow. So no pressure. <laughs> right. Uh, I was a bit bit nervous. Like if I don't pass, um, I'm going to miss the opportunity. So I had two land listings, um, one uh, townhome listing, and then a buyer looking for an investment property uh, before I was even licensed. So as soon as I got my real estate license, I did all the proper paperwork, or as soon as I passed the test, I did all the proper paperwork so that I could uh, get started as soon as possible. And I had listings within my first month. Um, and I was just so grateful that those clients chose to entrust me, um, especially at such a young age. I was only 22 years old uh, and they were choosing to trust me. And I think the reason why, especially going back and talking to them um, and asking them, hey, why did you trust me? I was brand new was they they saw the knowledge that I had which came from being a transaction coordinator and came from me being a real estate investor and having had the opportunity to then at that time I had purchased two investment properties. So I knew how to lead them through the process. Um, and I was very confident. I think in my speech, um, I always reached out to my brokers. If I had any, my managing brokers, if I had any questions before my listing presentations or when writing offers. Um, so yeah, I really, I think, that's helped set me apart at a young age is, is having that knowledge to bring to my clients. Love that. Can you, yeah, so can you tell us about that first listing or buyer appointment? What was it like? How did you walk in the door? What you, were you prepared with? Um, you know, that's one of the questions that agents ask a lot. I have my first, you know, listing presentation. Absolutely. What am, I, am I walking in the door? What do I need to do? So I talked with another agent about how they prepare for their listing presentations. And this agent was so kind to get on a call with me for like an hour and answer all my questions. Um, and he had recommended that he always puts together an agenda, which now that I'm like a seasoned agent, I don't feel like I, I need an agenda. But as a new agent, just to like have an agenda for our meeting together on what was first, what was second, et cetera, was really helpful for me. So um, had the agenda, I'd walk in the door, you know, do a tour of the property, uh, discuss their CMA, discuss the seller's net sheet. So many agents don't prepare seller's net sheets. Like that is our fiduciary responsibility to our clients, in my opinion, to provide a seller's net sheet so that they know how much they're walking away with. And that was really important to this particular client for my first listing because they had just bought the property 12 months before they were going to sell it. Um, they had downsized from a detached home to an attached town home and they had a dog and it just wasn't the lifestyle they wanted to live. They felt rushed into that decision when they had purchased. Um, so they, they really appreciate the seller's net sheet and being able to realize that they could walk away um, and not be in the negative. Um, so yeah, just prepared that information, shared the CMA, shared my marketing with them, told them I would do open houses every weekend um, and, you know, would market it all on social media as I always do for all my listings. And they were impressed and signed the listing agreement right away. So, Right. Well, and let's talk about your approach to your customers. Um, one of the things that I was impressed when I first met you, you know, was just your, your servant attitude. You're, you're just you it came through in your social media it came through in your marketing it came through in your communications about wanting to help people um yeah how do you do you can you talk about that a little bit and do you think that that was um how did that impact your business yeah, absolutely. So our goal at the Holopinowinski Group of HomeSmart Realty is to educate and empower buyers and sellers to develop wealth 
uh, through helping them buy and sell real estate. So uh, my husband is on my real estate team as well. He's licensed. Um, so we work together to fulfill that mission statement. And one, they, one way that we do that with our buyers is we host uh, quarterly um, home buyer seminars. Um, so we we teach what school should have taught us. You know, I wasn't in school that long ago. I'm 25 right now. So uh, I just came out of high school seven years ago, just came out of college three years ago or so. Um, I'm losing track of time now. I feel like a real adult. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they didn't teach us how to buy a home in school. They didn't teach us how to develop a credit score. Um, I know a lot of other weird stuff that I learned in school, but the practical things like how to put a roof over your head, they didn't teach. And so we try to utilize um, our social media um, to help educate people. Um, so on our, our social media, we're whether it's educating current homeowners on how to care for their home in negative 12 degree weather, like right now, or how to buy a home, how to increase your credit score, um, how to utilize down payment assistance programs, or uh, marketing our home buyer seminars where they can learn and hear from the experts, like our lender, our attorney, um, you know, us, our home inspector. We really want people to understand the the home buying and home selling process before they get the process started. Love that. So from the get go, talk about like like did you have a database? Did you begin to build a database, or have. you know how? What was the structure be, behind you know the keeping track of all of your contacts and your sphere? Absolutely. So I didn't start with a database from the get go, which I would have, uh, you know, if I restarted again, I would have, um, but I really considered Facebook to be my database. Um, so, I mean, having over a thousand friends on Facebook, um, you know, that was a place for me to just get the word out about my business. I remember the, the first day that I had quit my job and gone full-time realtor, I posted this video, um, just sharing with people why I was doing it. Uh, and it was a Facebook Live, I believe. Um, and that just really got the word out. You know, I had COVID the first two weeks I was licensed. I was so mad. <laughs> I had COVID the first two weeks. And I just sent personal videos to everyone, letting them know that I was a realtor through Facebook Messenger because I didn't necessarily have their name and number yet. Um, but today, my husband and I, we do use Lofty. Um, and we love the partnership that HomeSmart has with Lofty. I think it's like 40 bucks a month or something. Um, so super affordable. Um, um, and really does a lot. We haven't even tapped into all the tips and resources uh, that Lofty has for us yet, but it's a great way for us to manage everything for sure. That's awesome. So Amber, um, I understand that you're a very uh, active on social media and that you've got a strategy that's working. Uh, will you share that with us, please? What Absolutely. are you doing? How's it working for you? What's uh, What's been your biggest surprise with that? Or what hasn't surprised you at all? Yeah, um, I think just we try to post every single day something real estate related. Um, I know some people have a strategy of posting a lot of personal stuff and a lot of real estate stuff. I kind of feel like my whole life is real estate and that doesn't bother me. <laughs> but we also live in a, a home that we're remodeling. So we love to post about things that we're remodeling as well. Um, and, and different tips and tricks there about how to do DIY stuff. Um, but yeah, we just come from a really educational point of view. Um, we love sharing client stories. Uh, we love the stories, especially we've been able to help a number of buyers purchase a home for just 1% down with the help of down payment assistance and seller paid closing costs. Um, so when we share those stories, people share those posts like wildfire. Um, we're sharing with people that they can buy a $210,000 home for $2,100. We just did that about three weeks ago for a client. Um, so we're doing what people don't think is possible and it shocks people on social media. And then they share with their friends, their young adult children, um, their coworkers, and it, it spreads like wildfire. Uh, so just post consistently, post daily. Other social media tip ideas, we do open houses and and when it's a little bit slower, we'll jump on our Facebook Live and show the home off to um, to our social media audiences. We'll see who joins all the time. And then we follow up with those people via uh, Facebook Messenger to see if they have any interest in buying or selling too. So there's a lot of, um, I mean, as real estate professionals, we all post a lot. But what do you find really works 
for you. And posting every day, um, it can can get a little tedious at times. I mean, do you ever run out of things to talk about? And and what do you find that really works for you? The post uh, I, engagement. Yeah. Once you get in the groove, like the ideas just flow for me, at least like when I'm at right. the gym in the morning, I usually will come up with an idea just thinking about something and then I'll already post. And then an hour later, I come up with another post idea. So like once you're in the routine of doing it every single day, it just flows. Yeah. If you're a realtor that's trying to post every day and you don't have ideas, um, you know, there's different strategies like the who, what, why that you can look up online. Um, and, and there's some prompts there. Um, we now have uh, artificial intelligence, right? Chat GPT and open AI um, and those platforms and they'll write your post for you. <laughs> and then of course you want to make it sound more personalized. Like it's coming from your voice. Um, it'll write video scripts for you. Um, it does so much. There's really no excuses for why you can't come up with something to post just google what can i post as a realtor and you'll get an idea hmm, great advice thank you for that yeah That's great advice so are you actually using any chat gpt or ai type prompts uh yes not so much for our social media our social media is really just like the passion of my heart speaking out and to help educate um, our peers and those that um, are connected with us on social media um, but for our video scripting absolutely that's a great place for us to start it saves us so much time um, of course we then adapt it and make sure that it's correct um, for our area um, but our video scripts are definitely coming from there and then we also do utilize the support of interns periodically so we partner with our local universities including my alma mater um, to be able to uh, find students that want to intern doing marketing um, or doing video editing and they will help come up with our scripts as well that's great so, so what was the name of your alma mater again? I went to Olivet Nazarene University in Bourbonnet, Illinois. Love that. That's cool. great. Okay. So, um, can you walk us through a little bit about your, your daily routine? You started a little bit with the gym and, you know, et cetera, but agents often really wonder, um, what, what are agents doing all day long? Like what, what does your day look like? And specifically how much of the ratio is transaction related versus marketing related? Yeah, good question. So routine, I have to be honest, is something that I have struggled with probably all of my life. Um, but as a realtor, I've under I've be began to understand how important that is. Um, so Eric and I have put together kind of like a daily task list of, of what we want to do. Um, but we definitely wake up, we start early at the gym, uh, get in the sauna, I'll be listening to a podcast or maybe a, a sermon or something while at the gym. Um, I'm in the word, I'm a follower of Jesus. So I like to read the word in the morning as well. Um, we'll have our breakfast. Um, and then maybe I'll, I'll do a, maybe like 20 minutes of picking up around my house just so that I can focus during my work day since I do work from home. Um, and then from there, we have a power hour, which consists of uh, our social media posts for the day and then connecting with people on social media. So maybe that's direct messaging, um, individuals or commenting so that the Facebook algorithm knows that we're there to not only uh, just post, but to contribute to other people's posts as well. Um, and then from there, we have a couple different chunks of like one hour times. So depending on what projects we're working on. So I have an event planning um, hour where I'll work on marketing our upcoming home buyer seminar. We have a transaction coordinating hour where we will work on, you know, reaching out to our current clients under contract and those that are um, that we're actively shopping or our active listings. Um, so we, we like to chunk our days and like our sections. Um, and I might not get everything done. Say uh, we're like editing a video. We're not going to be able to edit a video in one hour, but we're working on it a little bit day by day. And by the end of the week, we make a lot of progress in those categories. That's, that's good advice. The, I like the... Uh you know, our time blocks. That way you make sure you cover all the different aspects of your business. Love yeah, that. And we have a Drill down a little more on that. I really, I, I mean, will you say, okay, we, 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 we do our power hour. Is that something 
that you and Eric, like, I mean, do you schedule that and say, you okay, know, it's our power hour right now. We're going to focus on this. I mean, is this something that you like do and say out loud? Um, and, and so you, you, you declare it, I guess is Absolutely. what I am, am going for here. Uh, and yeah. so, okay, I'm time blocking this. And, and is that easier than to shut out? Sorry for the hands all over the screen there. <laughs> I, I guess I'm yeah. part Italian. I talk, I talk <laughs> with my hands. Anyway, does that, do you find that that helps you focus for that hour to, to knock that chunk out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. By having those hour time chunks, for sure, it helps us focus because I'm like, I only have an hour to do this. And then I won't get distracted by scrolling through Facebook or the dishes or, um, you know. The other squirrels in our life. Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. What would you say your clients appreciate about you the most? I think that that answer has probably evolved, but the thing that I'm most proud of now is that I think our clients would say that we're not done serving them when the transaction is over. We really love to keep in touch with our past clients. Um, of course, the advantage to that is hopefully future referrals from them, but we really take a lot of um, pride in seeing them live in their homes and see what they do with their homes. And so we've been doing our annual real estate reviews. We send a postcard on their homeowner anniversary. Um, we text them about like appealing their taxes and checking in on them when their new tax bills come out to make sure they're okay. Uh, we make sure that their homeowner's exemptions are there. Um, you know, we we really try to stay in touch with them and help them build wealth and save money on, on being a homeowner. It doesn't stop when the transaction's over. Uh, we really want to be there um, even when we're not necessarily being paid to be there. You, uh, you're you doing all of the right things. Uh, and, and I love your enthusiasm. Uh, we're recording this in early 2024. And there's a lot of moving parts in the real estate industry right now. There's a lot of um, uncertainties. There's a certain element of fear with some. Uh, how are you maintaining this winning mindset uh, uh, every day uh, how, and, and every week? I mean, are you doing anything specific uh, to nurture uh, yourself, your mindset, making sure that you're in good health. You mentioned the gym. That's fantastic. But really, I'm, 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 I'm wondering about what are you doing to, to uh, stay on track uh, and not get discouraged in what could be a very discouraging market? And it is for some. Mm -hmm. Great question. Um, I think I'm just super goal oriented and driven. I think I always have been, but I keep those goals in front of me. Um, we are real estate investors as well, and our goal is to always have enough cash flow from our investment properties to cover our everyday uh, expenses. That way, you know, if the real estate market does shift, we have mm -hmm. that income coming in and we don't have to worry as much. Um, and so this year, uh, we're turning 26 years old, um, which means that we are no longer going to be able to be on our parents health care insurance, um, which is really sad because it costs a lot of money to have health insurance, but um, we will no longer have all of our expenses covered by cash flow from investment property anymore. So we need to buy four more properties to be able to keep up with that goal. Um, and so we need to make a lot of money this year. <laughs> we need to sell a lot of houses. Uh, specifically, our goal is to sell 52 homes this year. Um, in order to be able to buy three to four more investment properties that provide us with more cash flow. Um, so uh, all that being said, we're just very goal oriented. We are on the same page as a married couple and what our goals are and what our responsibilities are to be able to fulfill those goals. Um, and we're constantly communicating and just making sure even quarterly we're on the goals. Um, Todd, you did a pod um, or a webinar um, about breaking it down quarterly and looking at last year's numbers per each quarter and each month and seeing how we can then, you know, take that 52 for the year and break it down into each quarter. And that was really helpful. So we know how to stay on pace because quarter four usually is slower for us than um, quarter two and quarter three. Right. So 
yeah, we're always just making sure we're on pace. Uh, Lofty helps us stay on pace as well, our database. Um, one thing I do want to work on is surrounding ourselves with other people that are very goal oriented. Our preferred lender is very goal oriented. Um, our preferred uh, attorney is very goal oriented. We share our goals with them uh, so we can see what their motivations are and they can share in our uh, motivations and goals um, and win as well. Ooh, that's a big one. I like that, Amber. What um, you're sharing your goals with others that you know and like and trust, and who have uh, some sort of an interest in your business. Um, there are schools of thought uh, that say, uh, "Yeah, I don't share your goals with anybody because they're negative, and and or other people are negative, and they're just going to pull you down and and talk you out of it and say you can't do it." Um, but you're talking to people who are other other highly goal oriented people, and so they're embracing your goals and lifting you up. Is Absolutely. that working for you? Yes, yeah. I mean, very cool. I'm with their big goals or their quarterly goals, and so I want to check in with them quarter one. How are we tracking? And you know, I want to be a part of their success. You know, our attorney shared how many transactions and files he wants to have this year. I want to help contribute to to that. Um, because he does great work and he wants to contribute to my success as well. So I view it as a larger team. Excellent. I love that. Yeah. It's so, also part of a mindset. So, you know, we're playing with that whole question again. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Well, that shared success, that teamwork, that positivity, Rich, what was going through my mind is what wasn't as much about oh, they're the negative or, you know, sharing my goals is a lot of agents are afraid even to share some of their goals with someone very close to them because, um, you know, there's that accountability word. There's that challenge Ooh. word, right? Accountability. But, and challenge and helping yeah. make each other better. And, and one of the things that I love is um, I love the people around me that actually challenge me and and sometimes um, even nudge me a little bit when I need nudged and I find out that I'm better off or I achieve maybe more of a goal when I have those people that help nudge me. But yet it also makes you uncomfortable and vulnerable when you get into that level of the relationship with someone, right? When you're talking about goals and deadlines and different things like that but it's it's like a coach right it's very personal but it's powerful though too so it sounds like you have a lot of that yeah i could certainly use more i'm open to it <laughs> that's awesome um what would you say if you were to look at your business and then i want to dig into your investing just a little bit in just a second but if you were to look at your business what is one of the biggest drivers of moving your business forward a key to success like one thing one thing that you could point to that really maybe drove your business forward more than anything else tough question. just like having that mission statement and like going back to it all the time like how are we truly educating and empowering those around us um, to build wealth. I'm um, very passionate about that, which is why I'm also a real estate investor, but um, just staying focused on that. Like if I didn't have that mission statement to go back to, I might be all over the place, you know, but uh, our home buyer seminar educates um, our social media posts on DIY home improvements that empowers um, and people know that they can count on us to, educate and empower them. They know what they're going to get from us uh, because we've created that brand on social media um, that's connected with our mission statement. So we've, we you've mentioned investing a couple times um, yes. too, and real estate professionals, real estate experts like you, you, you have so much knowledge and sometimes agents put that knowledge to work for themselves more than other agents do. So how did you dip your toe into investing and how do you manage the daily, like how many properties are you managing right now? Because there's also something comes out of that firsthand experience of more and more properties 
it builds your knowledge base every week with what goes on with those properties and with those transactions, you know, et cetera. So how did you get started in investing and what's the, how do you manage those properties? Sorry about that. Do you want to repeat that question again? Oh, sorry. I was saying, how did you get started with investing and how many properties are you managing? How, how do you manage? Yeah, so um, yeah. I got started with real estate investing when I was 21 before I bought or before I was even licensed. Um, my dad was a real estate investor, so I was exposed to it. But when it came to buying my properties, uh, I, he didn't give me any money and I didn't, he wasn't a, a co-borrower or anything on the loan. I had to do it all, my, all on my own. He empowered me to do that. Um, and he was there to help educate me as well, um, in the beginning stages. Um, and then from there, I bought my second property when I was 22 and then I became a full-time realtor. So I had to take a break due to, uh, lending guidelines, um, until I had two years of filed taxes uh, but now just to kind of fast forward, we have six properties um, and I would consider my husband our property manager. So whenever something uh, needs to be fixed, uh, he goes over there, tries to troubleshoot it. If not, then he'll manage the contractor to get it done. Um, they're all in our town, in the neighboring town next door to us, um, both the hometowns that Eric and I were raised in. So we're very familiar with those areas. Um, and we specialize in midterm housing. So we house families that have experienced um, fires typically, they're policyholders, and the insurance company uh, pays us about a 30% premium for them to live in our homes on a short term lease. It's typically a three month to nine month initial lease term. Um, we are very passionate about helping these families. They are very grateful to be living in our homes, um, and it's just mutually beneficial all around. Um, so, yeah, we manage six properties. Also, the home that we live in, we do house hack. So we do have two roommates. While we don't have to have roommates financially, we do love sharing our home with two young professionals that um, are living on their own for the first time. They moved out of their parents' homes. Um, and that's just really rewarding for us to live in community. Uh, I also say this in a very loving way, but Eric and I see each other all day long <laughs> since we work together. So it is nice to have some other people in the home just to communicate with and be able to say, hey, how's your day at work? So yeah, we have stack too. That's great. Okay, so Rich and I have one question we like to uh, always ask on the podcast and that's, what do you wish someone would have told you a while ago? Yeah. What do I wish someone would have told me a while ago? Um, or what do you, you I yeah. really surrounded myself with people that have given me good advice. So if I may tweak that question, if I'm allowed to, the best piece of advice that I was given during a training at HomeSmart with my fellow agents was, Amber, you're not setting your goals high enough. We know you're capable of doing more. And I love that because when I was in employed by other people, they always told me that my goals were too big. And I actually worked in nonprofit fundraising before. So like, shouldn't they want my goals to be big? Shouldn't they want me to raise more money for the organization? But they were intimidated by me as an employee. Um, so I love that. Like, why are you limiting yourself? Like, you can do it. Like, set your goals high. So I love that. I love that. So, uh, HomeSmart, you just mentioned, or your or your broker working with your broker. Why, why did you choose, why did you choose HomeSmart? What do you love about your brokerage? Yes, I would say two things. Um, my broker support hotline is always available to me, especially as a new agent. I had lots of questions, and being able to pick up the phone and call them, um, I think they're like open from eight a.m. to eight p.m. to answer questions was really valuable for me. Um, I had heard of other agents that started at other brokerages that would have to email their broker and they wouldn't respond for days. Like that's not good, especially as a new agent. I needed that, that guidance, um, sometimes, especially to make sure that I was legally compliant. Um, and then second, um, I just really wanted to be at a flat fee brokerage. I interviewed at a lot of brokerages, 
Um, but the agent that I was the transaction coordinator for was at another brokerage before that was taking a large percentage of his commission checks. Um, and he had then switched to HomeSmart. So um, he, I had interviewed at multiple brokerages, talked about their commission structures with them. Um, and ultimately I decided, why don't I go to HomeSmart? Just try it out. You know, I'm capable of, um, you know, educating myself, you know, through Google, through books, through podcasts, and HomeSmart still does have classes for me. So let me just start with that. And if I need additional support, the the money that I'm not giving to another brokerage, I could always hire a private coach. I haven't hired a private coach yet. I didn't need one. I haven't, I haven't felt that I like needed, needed one yet. I'm sure I do need one, but I'm saving so much money. It allows me to invest um, in our investment properties, all that money that I do save by being at home smart. So it's worked for us so far and we're happy here. I love that. You know, back, you were talking about, you know, your goal, goal setting, um, helping 50 plus home buyers this year, that's somewhere between four and five transactions a month or four and five home buyers and home sellers you're helping every month. Um, 15 for a quarter, right? Breaking it down into those, you know, quarters and monthly. Um, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's a good goal. Um, how you doing so far? How are we doing so far? Yeah, I would like to say pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, yeah, I think we have four under contract right now, and it's only January fifteenth. So uh, we're we're doing pretty, and those are all set to close in January. Uh, so that's pretty exciting, and that's a team goal for Eric and I. So fifty-two uh, between him and I. Um, so yeah, we're off to a good start. That's great. Oh, it sounds like you're firing on all cylinders, and I love to hear it. I love to hear your focus. Uh, I love the way you have established your business and you have uh, this this team mentality and you're sharing your goals and you're holding each other accountable. Uh, you're going to have a great year. You're going to have a great you. career. We're excited. Well, um, you know, Amber, part, one of the things that I love about talking with you, even the other day we had that phone call with the top 250 agents in the whole country. And then right after the, we'd been chatting online and then afterwards we hung up and we got on the phone privately, you and I, and just talked a little bit. And, you know, there's a saying, I believe it's by Henry Ford. I don't know who it's really attributed to, but it says, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And one of the things that I appreciate so much about you is, you know, some people, maybe they'll think that their level of experience in the industry or their age or other certain things might maybe um, have them set their goals lower, right? Mm -hmm. But you just, from the minute that you, you know, got into the industry, you just seem like you have um, just you know, who, who, are, you know, who's, who are they to tell me what are, I can or cannot do, right? You know, I'm just going to go out and I'm going to help people. So can you, can you wrap it up the podcast here a little bit with that mindset of no self-limiting belief, right? That's what Absolutely. I, that's what I enjoy. You inspire me when I talk to you because it, it that's what I feel like you exude. Thank you. Yeah. I, just stop making excuses, you know, and start setting goals and start being committed to them. Um, if you're committed and, and driven and you don't lose focus on your goals and you stop making excuses and you own up and you challenge yourself and keep going and persevere and uh, kill any fire in your way to, to accomplish those goals, you'll go a lot farther than if you didn't set a goal at all. Love that. All right. Any last any last uh, comments to our audience here? Your fellow Thanks for listening. I hope that this is inspirational yeah. for young realtors or older realtors. Um, just thanks for joining. And I hope that I can learn from you too. Awesome. All right. So give everyone your website real quick and maybe, uh, yeah, give everyone your website so they can get a hold of you. Yeah, you can find me on Facebook at Amber Holf Nowinski, uh, YouTube at Living in Chicagoland, and Instagram under, uh, I think it's Eric and Amber Nowinski on there. So, right. Hey, Rich, we're going to have to check out that YouTube Living in Chicagoland. Mm hmm. Our, yeah, I'm, I'm clicking through. All right. <laughs>
Awesome. Well, thank you, Amber. It was so great. Uh, thank you for joining us here today on the Real Estate Podcast. I hope you, the audience, have enjoyed it. Um, Todd Sumney with Home Smart, Rich LaRue. Rich LaRue. Thank you. Amber, you. awesome. Great stuff Thanks, today. Uh, you knocked it out of the ballpark. Thank you. All right. All right. Take care. Like what you're hearing on the real estate? Tell your friends about us. Tell them to check out all of our episodes on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. And don't forget to send any topics you want us to tackle to the real estate at homesmart.com.